Hi, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. I feel that we deserve a round of applause. <laughs> yes. You deserve a round of applause because, A, you found out about this event. Second, you sign up to this event. We launched this literally over the weekend. It was like an impromptu thing. We like to do this kind of stuff here at Butter. So it's like, hey, I have an idea on Friday. Let's launch on a product hunt on Monday. So yes, let's do that. Um, so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Ana Maria, if we haven't met before. I'm leading the community project here at Butter. I am joining today from rainy and windy Amsterdam. Uh, and I am, um, oh, I am joined by two hosts, two awesome hosts. And before I pass the mic over to them so they can introduce themselves, I do want to mention that this session is being recorded. We like to record our sessions. We like to put all the knowledge out there in the world for everyone to learn and improve their facilitation skills. Uh, React, if you're joining us from mobile. Manuel, are you joining us from mobile? Well, Ross and, Ham, <laughs> Ross and Rob are? Manuel, Manuel no. OK. Awesome. Uh, well, it's still time. Today we're launching a product hunt. Pass by uh, the product hunt link. I'm going to pop it in the chat and do show us some love and do test butter on mobile. Uh, we've launched it last week. Now, today I am joined by Ross Chapman. Give it up for Ross, everyone. And Ross is the managing director at Obodo. And Ross, do you want to say a couple of words about yourself? Who are you? What are you doing here besides the fact that I invited you to join us? That, that was the reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Ross. I uh, am a ex-head of design. That's why I'm allowed to be here. Uh, and yeah, I've been running things like design sprints for the last four years and love fun tools like Butter. So been really watching how Butter's been growing over the last mm, few months and really excited about this feature because it's been one of the things that people keep on asking. People turn up to a Butter session and we find it difficult for them to come in, but now no bother. And when you don't have to explain something, then it becomes super easy. So really excited about that. And I just love this community. So um, yeah, just happy to be involved. Fun times. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining. Thank you for accepting my invite on such a short notice. And the same goes for you, Rob. Welcome. And Rob Hamlin is the founder of Leap. Be the Leap. Would you like to tell us a couple of words about yourself, Rob? Ooh, you're on mute, but you're going to unmute yourself. There you go. Sorry. I thought you were going to do that for me. Ah. Um, <laughs> There you go. This is nice to be on the other side of facilitation for a change, isn't it? So I'm making all the mistakes like everybody else does. So there we go. Um, yeah, my name's Rob. i um, been a designer for, I worked out about two weeks ago, over 25 years now. So I've got to like correct how I say that. And um, yeah, I've been a designer, product designer, UX designer, visual designer, um, anything else in between. Uh, I now own my own thing in Berlin, which is Leap. And we take a lot of pride in uh, giving very kind of unique um, and uh, personalized experiences of which butter plays a significant role in that spreading. Um, so uh, yeah, kind of really nice to, to be on the other side today and to kind of talk to you guys as well. And special call out to Alan as well. Obviously I know you Alan very well. Thanks for joining today. Awesome. Thank you so much. So everyone, uh, oh yes, we see you Aline. Yay. It's Alin or it's Aline. I have a feeling that Hello, your name's Ron, sorry, I just It's Alin. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. I just uh, now I managed to open the, the video. Uh, yeah, quite excited to be part of this. First time in butter? No, no, no. I use it. Uh, okay. I yeah, I use it like for a couple of months, and I love it as well. Awesome. Perfect. Well, for everyone in the room, um, this is a fireside chat, which is uh, the same thing as an ask me anything. So these awesome uh, guys with tons of experience uh, running remote sprints and other projects for their customers are here for the next 20 minutes. So please head over to the chat and pop your questions in the chat. Um, and I would like to get us started with, uh, I have a couple of questions 
on my on my list as well. And the first thing I would like to know is very curious on how your your work has changed, like your interaction with the clients, the way you work with the clients, the way you work with groups today compared to three years ago before COVID. But beyond the typical, well, we had to move from offline to virtual, right? I guess that's kind of obvious. Has anything else in terms of dynamics, interaction, collaboration, something that was made easier, something that was harder? Uh, I'm super keen to hear how you've experienced that transitions beyond the, like, the typical, we're using different tools now. Uh, and I'm going to pass the question first to uh, Rob. Very good. Yeah, I mean, so remote working for me has been around for a very long time, but kind of pre-butter, I would say. Um, what should we say was life was very dark. Um, it was very boring. And um, it actually was much harder to uh, to run these kind of remote and virtual kind of uh, workshops. And for me, like, I mean, I know this is we're on butter and this is a platform that I've, I've loved ever since I first saw it. And for me, the thing that's really differentiated, um, you know, a butter workshop from a, a remote workshop is just the kind of personality that butter brings to um, to the workshop. You know, and you see a lot of copycat, um, you know, um, things like reactions and you know questions and things like that that are now happening on other platforms. Uh, but for me, like butter was really the first time that I really saw this. And you know, when I first met um, Jacob. Um, it was, um, you know, I think butter was maybe, or meat butter, as it was back then, was maybe like four months old, something like that. And for me, it just, I had already been heavily working in remote sessions for, for the week. We were working with a, a venture capitalist in California and our brains were just fried. Like, and just to have another workshop where it was more like a social, because we were in lockdown at that point, on a Friday night. Um, using something that wasn't uh, loom or or meats or something for me it was like I, I don't know what this tool is but I I have no brain power to kind of join this but the minute I joined with butter and the music kind of started playing I loved the personality that that offered and I felt that that was a supreme fit for for my offering to my clients as well so and again the reason for kind of joining today and and being obviously not only just to have another chat with Ross who, which is a pleasure anyway but to also just test it on mobile and actually see what it's like. So before I'm going to put that in front of my clients, I always use these opportunities to to kind of test the product as well. So yeah, thanks for having us today. Pleasure. Ross, passing the same question over to you. Good, good question and, and beautiful segue there, Rob. We, whenever we put something in front of a, a wider team, whether they're clients or your, your kind of colleagues, you want to use it in anger just to make sure that you are aware of how it works and um, some of the nuances to it because certainly when you're working with a team that isn't your own the tools often determine part of the experience that they're going to have working with you and so that's why something like today is is so key because you you could have a check-in or a end of week retro and a key stakeholder might have started their weekend a bit earlier and <laughs> might just be on their phone. Um, but I think in answer to your original question, the difference is when uh, three years ago, when, when we really had more of a focus here, uh, I think there were just a handful of tools and there was no other kind of real alternative. And you didn't want to try a new alternative because it was so important to get it right in in those for you know in those early years i think now you're able to pick and choose and be a little more selective over what is going to be the best experience for everyone and then more often than not you know having something that integrates with something else we didn't have that three years ago you know you can really zap tools together like you can now and you're really able to enable the team to free them up to think and to to kind of decide and align rather than the rigmarole of putting everything together. I think the other thing I'd say is it hasn't just progressively got better over the last few, three years or, or butter. Uh, it has 
just had that period of everyone being remote and spending that time doing it i actually think it's the the challenges now are, are different to when they were i think the challenges now are about how can you not take too much on how can you uh kind of balance between enjoying your work and performing well because ultimately i think if you've got a computer in front of you you're, you're twice or, or three times as effective than without it especially in some of the realms that we're working with complex digital products or uh, managing teams that are you know remote so I, I think the challenges now are more around how can you increase that together time engagement and happiness and you know a tool like butter is is fantastic for that so yeah massive change over the last three years and i'm just excited for the next three as well well i have so many questions leading from what you just said ross because actually my next question was related to the challenges right and you and you already mentioned what is harder now than we that we find ourselves in this virtual hybrid some are embracing hybrid others are more careful with with this concept right but both of you are working with so different clients and different projects and so many teams and i wonder if you could if you have already identified pinpointed some common challenges that everyone's facing at the moment like what what's on their what's on the team's mind people's minds in innovative uh, companies product teams etc and how how are you addressing them and i know that ross you touched on that so i'm keen to hear what um, what rob has learned through through your work and your team's work yeah i mean it's a good one um i'm basically going to say that it's there's still the same challenge the same challenge is still connecting with people when you're not in a room with them okay and for me butter is something that helps to kind of bridge that i still don't think it's 100 percent perfect but that's the tool as the whole rather than all of the tools out there because being in a room with people is a radically different experience but what I will say is that Butter does bridge that, I would say better than the other video um, and facilitation tools that are out there. Um, because it just somehow means that you have a better connection with them. People want to have their camera, like in my workshops, people want to have their cameras on. I don't have to beg them to turn their cameras on, which is for me is a bit of a luxury. I know that other you know, workshop facilitators, they have this challenge all the time. Um, having a structure to like how you facilitate is better. For example, you know, there's times when I use um, uh, like Teams, and you know, if you're if you're actually presenting uh, in the in this is the it might be a different setting or whatever, but whenever I'm presenting or I'm using a link with a university or a college, for example, and I am having my chance to present, I can't see any of those people in that room when I'm presenting. And like for me, these are the kind of fundamental kind of basics that. Um, and allow you to have a better connection with the audience that you're talking to. And otherwise, you're just talking to a blank screen. So for me, I, I think if I've answered this question correctly, I, it feels like um, just the, having that connection with your audience in a way that somehow mimics that real life interaction. Um, for me, um, it's constantly getting better. There's things that are happening, like even um, in my team, it's a shame they're not here because um, in the last sprint that we ran a couple of weeks ago, I was just using the soundboard all the time. And literally everybody was just pissing themselves laughing because it was just it was just a moment where, you know, we it was a very intense workshop. We were running sprint and you know, like I would just hit the like the horn or whatever it was. And like even the client was just like absolutely like, you know, wetting himself laughing. And it's things like that where you are just bringing everybody together. And, you know, I kind of, for me, um, it was just a moment where that was a, a, a like a, I always talk about this in a lot of the conversations I have, but it was like a power of moment where you are bringing people together and it became a memorable landmark in that workshop of things that we were doing. And I guess at some point people were just expecting me to do it as well. So I was happy to kind of play that role as a way of just kind of, you know, giving everybody a bit of a laugh and a giggle. And um, it's just about, bringing that kind of togetherness in in a way where we're all sat in different places around the world or different rooms or whatever and making everybody feel united and lowering the boundaries of 
input so that people can actually um, input without even really thinking about it as well. So for me, that's that's how I would answer that question. So what I thank you so much. What I hear from both are the needs are very still very much human, very much um, people related, connection related. But there are tools and technologies role probably in solving that that challenges are to enable us team leads, facilitators, etc., to to enable us to overcome or tackle those challenges more effectively and. Uh, and Ross mentioned, I'm very keen to to see what's happening next, you know, what the next years are going to bring. And I guess there's so much talk now about the metaverse and what's next and are we all going to turn into avatars and how's that going to look? And I'm very curious if we were to kind of shift and, and, and try to teleport our imaginations 20 years from now, maybe 10, not, not even 20, probably that's like too far away, 10 years from now, what is, what do you two think it's, it's different when it comes to the way teams innovate, collaborate, get together, solve complex challenges? So on one hand, what is different? Like what, what do you think is changing or will, will be most likely to change? And second of all, what will stay the same? What's always going to probably be there and, and why? I think what will stay the same? I think the, the needs to solve problems in a creative way in, within constraints, I think that you're always going to have constraints, whether they're creative, um, technology, date, time, there's always going to be constraints. The, the ability for the team, the ability to hire the right team, uh, that's always going to be a, a constant. There, there will be elements that might be taken over by technology, um, but there's still the, the need to think and to act. I think some of the things that will change, I think the speed, we think things are running fast right now. I think the speed will just ever increase. And even today, what, 2022, something last week for one of our clients that wasn't too urgent, today is now urgent. And I, I think that that's quite a big company. It takes a while for things to, to go around. I think the, the speed will increase. I think the, the ability to be able to collaborate wherever you are um should should still you know gain that maturity i i think for for some it's still new and oh can't you just pop in and we can talk about it i think that's still part of the mentality sometimes but um it's it's still an opportunity for um for, for teams to really collaborate but i i don't know what the future will bring i i think there are going to be things like you know being able to be in an immersive experience and that's great uh you know could that be used in certain situations where you know we 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 need that i think just the ability to be flexible to 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 kind of take some of those assumptions and maybe have more of a, a kind of understanding of what we can do in real time i think is is going to be really really awesome so yeah i think speed's going to improve and I don't I don't see that going away. What do you think, Rob? What what's gonna, what's yeah, gonna change? The, uh, the thing that really kind of pinged into my mind um as the question was being asked is that people are changing. And I think people or maybe not changing, people are adapting. I think people are adapting way more to technology than they probably would have been two years ago. And you know, this could be a slightly controversial thing to say, but you know, there are good things that have come out of the last two years, and that is that you know, remote working and technology, people have had to embrace a lot more aggressively than they would have done before. And, you know, it's kind of woken everybody up that that technology can actually help them and enable them. You know, even like, you know, local coffee shops here in Berlin, they're now, like Berlin is a very cash, uh, or it was a very cash uh, kind of only culture. Whereas, you know, um, with Corona, everybody's now doing electronic payments. So, Coming back to the workshop side of things, people are now embracing the technologies that enable them to connect with people with way less friction, 
than they first wanted to or than they first had. And I think for me, that's one of the biggest things. So adapt, uh, people are adapting to kind of the requirements of like te new technology and they're willing to try them more. And so much of um, my conversations in the last like six months have been around like, you know, AR and VR and, you know, people drawing on whiteboards in games within like VR. And, you know, I think we're still uh, like a long way off from something like that. But I think that's a little glimpse into the future of what, um, some sort of hybrid kind of facilitation might be because I think this is going to be people are now going to be like well do you know what? you can get a headset pretty cheap these days who's to say that you know the future of sprints is that you know everybody gets a headset sent to them and you have this kind of virtual space where you know butter is this 3d kind of you know space where you have um, avatars of everybody around the table you know, we just don't know. Like, it could be just overkill. We just don't know at this point. But all I know is that the people that I'm having these conversations around are a lot more open to things like that with it being their future than than, than they were, like, two years ago. So, yeah, it's a really interesting. I, I could talk about this for hours. Like, I think this is a really interesting topic. Awesome. Yes, I know. It's very... Because we don't know what's going to happen, that's what makes it so exciting to kind of, like try to imagine and place ourselves in this in, in this imaginative state and i think that stefan has some questions stefan would you mind on muting and just pop the questions off or should i just give wiggle a finger if and i take it for you if you want <laughs> no, i'm absolutely cool taking it um Yay. actually suggestion i took it on the mobile and it's really interesting to to navigate uh, thank you guys so much for your comments here. I was just wondering, playing into the element of gamification, you know, sprints is such an interactive way of engaging. Where do you think that it would even go a little further towards interactivity, towards a gamified experience? Mm -hmm. For me, Butter has really been a very playful platform. And every time I introduce it to new people, they love it. They absolutely enjoy the interaction that's possible. If you, in, in your wildest dreams, where would you see things going? Ooh. Good question. Good question. Um, I mean, yeah, this is something that I've also had to give a lot of consideration to all the time. I'm always um, thinking about how, um, how the leap sprints are evolving all the time, uh, and they do. But there has to become a point where everything has to have a purpose for change. So, like, you know, when you're talking about gamifying something, you know, like it would it would have to benefit the client's needs in order to do that. Like if you gamified it to the point, like are they going to feel more inclined to contribute doing storyboarding, for example? Um, are, if you gamify something, are they going to write better how might we? Like these are all the things that you'd have to kind of um, ask yourself. And I'm not saying that it's not and it should never happen. Like at some point this probably will happen. But I, it would be really interesting to kind of make a sprint so gamified that people felt just compelled to like, you know, participate more and more. But for me, it would have to, the trade-off would be that you, it would be the sprint of all sprints and people would contribute um, without being badgered and that, you know, handwriting would be clear if you're doing it digitally, all these kind of things, you know? So um, yeah, for me, client experience, always would have to be questioned about whether there's a gain for it. Hope that is a good question then. It is a good question. Uh, yeah, we we ruin the design sprint method every day. Uh, only, only through experimentation. Um, because the, I, it wasn't ever, I think initially we thought, oh, we'll just take what we do in a workshop and put it online. We'll create like, online meetings and that'll be that i think as we've gone through the last few years we've noticed well in in our experience we've noticed the people's attention and the time that they want to give to something has dramatically reduced so you know in terms of gamifying i i would want that to lead into the problem space not create the enjoyment of the experience without the thing that we're working on that that would defeat the the objects of it i think uh you know it, it's it goes from even having icebreakers or warm-ups or energizers uh 
in 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 line with the problem space that you're working in and i i don't think the you know i i i think some things will enable more enjoyment if that's what we're we're terming um from from gamification and and some things will feel more energetic and and more enjoyable um you know i i can totally see that some of the activities that we're doing now we're, we're experimenting and, and to rob's point we wouldn't change it for you know just changing sake there's got to be a really good reason to it um you know things like sketching on paper and then taking a photo of it and adding it and you still can't read people's writing yeah of course you know there, there's an opportunity to solve uh i've even experimented with changing red voting dots to thumbs up you know there, there's just little micro things that you can try just to bring that experience of working together where the environment isn't doing that for you um in in the in-person sprints i used to run part of it was the lunch that we'd all order and have together and part of it was the the after workshop drinks that some people stayed behind and kept me company on i'd still have them but um it, it depended how how large the group was uh and i used to get really expensive wine as well and that's really cut some of the uh the cost of things uh but, but yeah i i think there is element to say let's let's not you know problem solving is great but let's go on an adventure and if we want to do that in a more you know enjoyable fashion that doesn't exclude but if anything exemplifies and and brings inclusion in then then that is something i'm excited about for sure uh we're at time like believe it or not 30 minutes are passing by flying i just want to uh have a final invitation to uh, the participants uh, in the room has anyone got a final question for ross or rob or both of them now is your time to unmute and just put it out there no movement you know what that means <laughs> okay i have one final question and this is a really truly rapid fire question what is your advice a practical advice a concrete tip trick for anyone here that would like to improve their facilitation skills not everyone's at a super advanced level yet working with complex topics big teams different clients so i cannot let you to go without taking that gem of wisdom away yeah, I mean, this, oh, I don't know, I've got a bit of an echo on my mobile for some reason, Ben. Um, this could be answered so many ways. Uh, my first thing would be that if it's just about facilitation and not about product, if you're just unsure of how you communicate to people, then just record yourself presenting or facilitating a, uh, a part of a workshop and then just watch it back and watch like what you do or watch how you, maybe you, I was really guilty of putting a lot of ums in um, in between sentences. And it was only until I really played it back, I realized like, holy oh, shit, I sound like a douchebag. So, you know, like the, you get into bad habits. Um, so just, and I actually always urge the team to continually watch themselves once they've presented something. Because you never really stop learning as well. And I think the, the minute people feel like they are the A-game facilitator and they are, you know, the expert or the, you know, the grandmaster or whatever you want to call it. You, I, I disagree with that. Like you, there's always uh, room for improving and learning and making your facilitation skills better than the last workshop that you were on. I really like that. that that's, yeah. If you think you're the Don, <laughs> you're not. You're really <laughs> scrappy and you don't know it. Uh, I, I like that idea. I learned a lot through, I was... Um, uh doing a talk on stage somewhere which was nerve-wracking enough but probably the most worrying thing was i watched the recording after it and i i it was the rhythm in which i was speaking and it, it was just weird and i i've really improved that i think a practical thing that you can do because of course personal branding is key is just create webinars or create opportunities for complete randos to just turn up 
and for you to to share something even if it's a lightning decision jam even if it's a how to write that perfect how might we create an opportunity that you would be proud to to join as a participant but also um lead and then you know put it a few weeks in advance and uh then you've created a, a problem that you have to solve um so yeah i i would i would pretty much build upon rob's idea which is very design thinking of me <laughs> It's very meta, everything that happens here, uh, you guys. It's very learning by doing, I, I noticed. So it, it's it truly really with facilitation, you have to put yourself out there and do the mistakes that you have to do uh, and and learn learn by uh, learn by doing. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Ross. Thank you, Rob. This was a amazing, amazingly well spent afternoon, 30 minutes on a Monday. And thanks everyone for joining. Um, and hope to see you around. And let me give everyone a round of applause. Enjoy the rest of your day and, uh, and hope to see you soon. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.